Bolvenaka and welcome to Fiji BC, a four-part video podcast series that uh, aims to take a deeper look into what Fiji was like before all of this, before what we know now as you know the influence of Westernization, influence of uh, outside uh, cultures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I put together this uh, show because. For one thing, I was pretty curious about how Fiji was like back in the day. I keep saying back in the day. I promise I will, this will be the last time that I say back in the day. I need to come up with a new phrase. I'm curious about what Fiji was like, Fiji BC was like. And I, rather than um, delving into you know proper sources like libraries and uh, other thick old books, I decided to actually go straight to the source of someone who's actually pretty knowledgeable with um, what Fiji was like. And um, that person is our guest today, uh, Mr. Seven Grandin. Thank you for uh, being the, the go-to person, uh, for the, being the depth of knowledge of uh, all things uh, old Fiji uh, with regards to this show. And in this episode, we will be going into the aspect of old Fiji that is the arts something that uh, a lot of us are sort of familiar with in terms of um, what has uh, survived today, which is mekes, uh, music, the masi, the basically aspects of the culture that are nice to, to look at and to, you know, you can hear all those uh, more noticeable aspects of uh, uh, Fiji culture. Like this, this um, I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, you know what? Let's just put this down for a moment. There was an interesting uh, thing that you told me uh, a while back when we met to discuss about this show and we were discussing about the arts and you said something interesting in that when it came to Fijian culture, art was practical. Mm. Practical. Could you, um, uh, just to start off this episode, could you ex expand further on what you meant by why was art practical? Why didn't we have why didn't we have those old, ornamental kind yeah of the art galleries? Where's where's yeah. our art galleries? Where's oh, our uh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> those thank kind of you things. and I, let me before I begin eh, I was curious when you said we will go to the source and immediately I sort of felt small because to us God is the source. Oh yeah, yeah sorry. I think I'm about to change and become a spiritual <laughs> <laughs> I think you might become venerated yeah, after this. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, like Buddha, the one who knows. Really? I can change it. I can change it. What, okay, bro, what I want would you prefer um, the speaker? The speaker. Of Parliament. I wrote that. <laughs> the speaker of all things uh, Fijian culture. Okay. Firstly, there is no Fijian word that is a direct translation or concept for the English word art. Like a generic. There is none. Even the word art in English is borrowed from French. So there is no, because, because it, 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 the reason there is no direct word in Tokyo for art, because the nature of art from the European culture is something that is ornamental, something that is decorative. Look nice. Look nice. It is, it is given the special attention and it's meant to be hung, meant to be whatever. But to stand, it's detached from us and you see it from a distance and admire it and then look at whatever. That is art in the European tradition in a very simple way of defining it or understanding it. In Fiji, and likewise in the Pacific, because there was no word for art, what was created must have a purpose. It must be functional. It must have a use. And in Fiji, the guiding uh, philosophy for that was be waka turanga tati. The base word being turanga, meaning chief, meaning honor. So, we means creating 
and uh, sharing honor. Oh. So, in, but when the Westerners came, they saw these, these creations and they said, art, art. And the locals said, what's that? <laughs> it's beautiful, it's perfect, it's symmetrical, it's blah, 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 blah. The local response would be, oh, we didn't know it was that. It was just our way of being way wakaturamataki, just giving our mangosa the best of our ability to ensure it is worthy of the chief or whoever it is that we are subject to. So this goes back to um, what we mentioned in the previous episode of how, like, if the chief wanted something, it was made specifically for that. Yes, yes. And there were also those who created as a sideline, uh, as a way of expressing their homage, their, 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 their respect, expressing their, their affection for the religion. Reverence? Reverence. Yes, reverence. So I've listed Stay some... School, guys. Uh, stay in school, guys. Reverence has nothing to do with the reverend. <laughs> so I listed here some of these creations which have now been, have come to be regarded as art. But they were never done. Oh, it's well, something artistic. It was done in the way Vakatu Rangataki. Masi, Kanu, the Makaunrua, salt, the various mats, the various pottery, the various food, the cook, the smoke, the raw ones, the sinet, the baskets, the construction, mure, the meke, the oratory speech we have, or it, uh, the, the, the crafts made from wood, tanoa, the kali, fishing and uh, planting. Even those, uh, those resource gathering. Oh. And oil. Coconut oil? No, scented oil. Oh, um, scented oil? Well, it differs somewhere to have. Uh, so whatever the sense were, whether it's sandalwood, whether there's mokosoi, but we, whatever was relevant. Yes, yeah. whatever was relevant, whatever was the because what 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 I've just described, just a list. Different parts of Fiji would have different resources, so whatever the resource was bountiful in, they maximize and they produce whether it's pottery or oil. Whether it's fish or what, but the the art reflected the environment of the artist. Ah, so that explains why certain areas are known for, Bingo. like yes. you know, these guys are the massive, yes. you know, the yes. best. This type of massive. The, the massive people wouldn't have the earth for pottery. Right, the the clay. Mm. Oh, that explains a lot. Yeah. My where I come from uh, up in Undu Point, uh, we have these uh, the mats. Yes. The, the thick ones, yes. the iluvatus, and Iluvatu. those were like the yeah. the workhorse kind of mats. Yes. Um, and you only find it there. Yeah. It is not found anywhere else. And in comes the outsider. Wow, art. What? What is art? Oh. But hey, why are you wearing it? We wear our art. We sit on our art. We eat from our art. That's the distinction between Pacific Fijian art. Right. It has to have a function. It's not something... This is... A traditional art form displayed in a Western way, the tapa. Yeah, this uh, decorative. It's decorative. It's taking <coughs> something that was made with Bibokaturanotaki and hung on the wall. But in traditional society, it's never hung on the wall. You weigh it, you make it into armbands, you wear, make it into head scarves. Um, you wear your art, you eat your art, you live in your art, you sail in your art. You use it as vessels, use it as baskets. Our art or must be functional. Was functional, must have a use. If it has no use, what's the use? So we, we practically lived and breathed. Yes. But because we did it so well, or they did it so well with the Bibokaturangataki philosophy, it was the outsiders who then saw it as works of art. Right. Because of its attention to detail, its symmetry, and it only being you know, confined to a particular location, making it rare. So this, uh, that's the word art, is an outsider understanding, but locally there is no word for art. Because, put it in another way, um, 
the in Western society, when you have the monarchs, they would have the artists who were commissioned to work and produce art for them. The paintings. The paintings, right. the cathedrals yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. But for in Fijian society, people lived, operated and worked with high quality products. All they, around, every, yeah, everyone yeah, had, all these things that everyone they, had access to high yes. quality stuff. Everyone had access to, there was no counterfeit. There was, everything was done to perfection and people were living with art to such a level that it was an everyday issue. But then in comes the outsider and say, wow, this is art. No, it's something we sit on, Matt. All right, so the Matt, that's a good segue into the next part. Like, um, with regards to like certain uh, aspects of uh, so so now this whole episode sort of tainted with like oh, okay I gotta I gotta put quotes into like you know art uh, certain aspects of Fijian art um, that I wanna sort of dive into which is uh, the first one which is uh, the the mat uh, um, uh, the mass sorry the weaving the mat weaving um, could you go just in, in the general aspects of uh, mat weaving like the purposes of mats and um, because I, I, in my head, it's only ever for the floor, but I've learned that they also use it for sails. And you know, what other aspects of um, mats uh, that it was used in uh, Fijian culture? Mats were also used, we never had doors in Amburi. They were also woven in such a way using very broad, coarse bandanas to sort of uh, roll them. Right. And uh, keep the wind away. Like a curtain or like, like a, a curtain? Like a curtain, curtain, yeah. But uh, in place of the door, there was. Do the, we have windows? Yeah. Yeah, windows. But we doors are a Western introduction. Oh. Which is why the practice of knocking is actually. So the word is tuki tuki, but that's a word used for from craftsmanship when you are pounding. Right, tuki, yeah. But uh, there's no word for tuki tuki, also for door, because you never. By philosophy, we were very hospitable. Enter, come, please enter. There was nothing to bar you from entering. So, but I'm, the, I'm digressing. But uh, mats, yes, they had their function. There were various levels and functions of mats, from the baby mats to the ones that would grace the house of a chief or the, on the floor. And also, mats were used as clothing. Oh, okay. Yeah. But different mats, different. Right. Some would use clothing from the kuta, the real sedge, the reeds, whatever. Those ones are, are the fine. Softer. Yeah, soft, yeah. nice ones. So those ones, those ones were made mostly in Vunalibu, the kuta, the real. So those who had uh, pandanas would do something similar. Where, where it would cover the doorways, where it could also be worn, where it could make into a table mat. We brought the yeah. table, we, we, the word for it, tablecloth, is imbe ni kana. Now we refer to imbe ni kana as in a tablecloth, but there was a mat actually yeah, closely mat. woven, yes, for the purpose of eating from it. So mats had, were woven for diff different lengths, different thicknesses, different uh, weaves to suit the function. So the one that would be used for sale would be the toughest pandanus that could withstand the elements With, of the yeah. wow. And the finest, softest one would be reserved for the delicacy of uh, delicacy, the delicateness of the chiefs as a way of uh, we've got to I mean, this is the best of the this best. is the best this even is our though, refined one even though everything else was pretty good yes this, this was the best. best wow okay and then so you have the mat and then you have masi as well the same principle for mat would apply to the masi the pottery so it was like a worn as clothing yeah um, it was used to uh, for to signify a chief being in store where they had masi the, the tie yes. on the oh, Oh, yes, yes. Could I've also signify that. to be used as a, as a, uh, decorations for noble blood. It was also Masi was used also as bandages. Really? Yes. Uh, the material, or was there like did they 
you know, make special patterns like, okay, this is like a separate... Just like the Masi, uh, yeah. the mat, there were different thicknesses. There were also different thicknesses of Masi. There were the very fine ones that was like tissue, so thin that it was used as the... the, the they wove out the headdress of chiefs. I've seen that in the drawing. It's drawings, like, yes. They have those... Uh, yes. And they are the ones which were so thin that when they peeled it, it was actually like gauze. These were the ones that were the mosquito nets, taunamu. Wait, they had mosquito nets? Yeah. There's a word for it, taunamu. Taunamu. Wow. Well, well, now we're using the... The one that's made from some, the white one that's yeah, the sold in the shop. Like a gauze, like a gauze. Yes, but the gauze in the olden days was massy, taunamu. And they were so thin that it was breathable. Mm. That is fascinating. I did not know that. Yeah, the, the, the word for it is taunamu. That must have been really like, because uh, you know how they, how they that make it. That's the art. That, that, that's that where the skill art, comes in. Yes. Yeah. Because beating that thing to a... Uh, uh, First you beat it, you, uh, as in the... You want to explain the, yes. the basic... Um, the beating. How the, how the masi is made, just generally. There is a plant, it's uh, in Fiji, it's called masi tree, the buni masi. And it, uh, it grows, it's allowed to grow and mature within a year. And it's just a straight forward, it's, it's like a uh, ball pen. No, no, ball pen is too thin. It's about fingers too, about... It grows tall, about the height of uh, an adult, and when it is mature, when it has grown for about a year, it is cut down, and the skin is removed, peeled off, and you have the plain stick, and you have the, the skin, and that skin again that skin becomes peeled again. Oh. The outer skin goes away, then you have the inner skin, which is white. That's wrong. Soaked in water, some soak it in sea, it has to suffer it. Then it's under, then it's in the beating stance. Using the tuki, right? Na dutua and the ike. Ike. And then, pam, 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 pam. And then it, uh, the one little uh, stem, one heart plant, would then beat in and it'll expand, expand, expand until it becomes a bit of like this paper. Wow. That's ingenious. And then from that, we get so much uh, use out of it. Yes, this one, this one. Uh, imagine the length of the tree, the height. The, yeah, the height. Of that would be the length of the masi. That was the pure, the original, the product. Right. So it'll be gluing similar long pieces, and it'll form. Uh, that's how the length is determined. To be worn or to become a hundred foot long for yeah. offering. So it is the, they, they play around with the masi to suit the occasion, to have a use. I have a curious question. Um, because we, you know, Fiji, we, we're influenced by our neighboring countries and we have a stronger ties with uh, Tonga. Like what did trade with, uh, with regards to like masi and mats? What was what trade like uh, in the old days? How trade. did that work? Because I'm, I'm assuming that they did do, uh, you know, exchange of uh, fine, fine material, which in this case would be masi and ma fine mats and um, I don't know, fine grog. No, no, yeah, that was just. You only traded in what you didn't, you, what you or you went to trade to get what you don't have. Oh, okay. So. And you trade what you have a lot of. Yes, a surplus. So Tonga did not have this lorry, the, the, the cooler bird, red feathers. The, the ones the, that they put in the... the that was broke of a Tongan came to Fiji, Wakemba and Matuku and Kandabu, to trade the red feathers, to actually trade for birds. Huh. And they would pluck the red feathers for the ear Tongan, for yeah. the decorations, and they would trade it back to some of very enterprising Tongans. Yeah. Props to them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, the, the, which is why it explains the word, the color red in Tongan language is actually the word, name of the bird in Fiji, Kula Kula. It's from the Kula bird. Kula bird. Mm. Wow. It's interesting how the uh, link, eh? the mm. link of uh, culture between the countries, even though the, you know, we're pretty physically different, but like culture, culture wise, like there's a lot of. There's a lot of give and take, eh? Yeah. There's a lot of sharing. So why didn't the ancestors trade in masses? Eh? Because masses there, masses also here. Okay. Yeah. 
What about mats? Ah, you don't have a kuta, we have a kuta, because it only grows in a particular part of Fiji, which is why it is of value. So what we do not have is highly valued. Okay, so basic economics. Basic economics. And you thought they did not go to school. <laughs> Okay, well, that's um, so. That's one or one of the other stuff that uh, we wanted to cover. The other one was um, so we've got you know we've got the physical aspects of uh, the culture. I want to talk more about the um, the the music, the music, the oratory, the the more uh, verbal performance part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So aspects. Same of principle or approach with uh, weaving and masi. It's also the went to the choreographer. There would be. A choreographer, not per village, but per district. If I should, yeah, well, yeah. yes, district. So imagine four or five, six villages forming a district or a tribe or a yeah, clan. Tribe, clan. One of the, these villages, these clans, their role was to actually be the choreographers for the entire tribe. And perform for the pleasure of whoever it was, the leader, the chief at the top. Then there would be another one from another clan who would be the potter. And he would be the potter for the... Yes. What they lacked, that's what they traded with. So the ones on the coast, they did not have the, the resin that makes this shiny. Right. The, 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 the gum of the kauri, the kua. It, 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 because it's as an indigenous plant that grew in the mountains, the people on the coast traded with the mountain people. So they would bring their resin gum. What was not in the mountains? Fish. The salt and the yeah. fish. Salt. You're right. So they would trade salt. You think butter for better is something... Oh no, it was uh, uh, within... The, there was this uh, local economics and trade. So that, that means uh, the 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 pro, yeah. So the province. So within the district, so to speak, they had the the one guy who was responsible for like for the choreography, the creating of the dance. Uh, was he also the one who wrote the Mecca music? Yeah. So one and the same person. So in, it's interesting that we may mention it. In English, it they separate the choreographer and the composer. Right. The choreographer is the one who comes with the moves. The composer is the one who comes up with the sounds, the melody. Right. Oh, we don't have that. It's a one-stop shop in Fiji. The one who is called the Ndaunibudu right. is the same person, composer, choreographer. So Ndaunibudu is more like a general term of both dance and music. Mm. What Western society saw as two, we saw it as one. Well, that's handy, save money. Yeah, everything <laughs> has to have a use. It's <laughs> just true. Have a function. The purpose of uh, cre- creating music uh, and the, the make and all that, the dance, was it specifically um, just for the chiefs or did it have like uh, uh, spiritual purposes as well? Uh, both. The, remember when we were talking about spirituality, the priest was the one who was the gatekeeper to the spiritual world. Right. He opened the spiritual, got out just enough mana and gave it out to whoever was asking. Right. So the same would be for the choreographer, composer, and the movie. They have their own, the priest would be approached and you'd access this, uh, this the mana from the spiritual to give them the ability to come up with these fascinating sounds and choreography, put them together into this wonderful thing called the making. In uh, in medieval Europe, you have kingdoms, you have monarchs, and they had what was called the court dances. Right. So you would have the ballet, which is French, but it was for the, the Russian kings, the Russian czars. It was it was it was a refined expression of the beauty, full, for the pleasure of the leaders, of the, the rulers, the kings. We all, our version is in the Mecca. They were composed for the pleasure of the chief. If this chief comes under a greater chief, it was their tribute. So a tribute doesn't uh, always have to be something, something physical. Product. It, it, it can, so there are those who their tribute is a dance. There are those who their tribute are human sacrifices. Are tributes? Hmm. Huh. Okay. 
wholly cooked humans, well oiled, dressed and then offered. Well, it's funny because um, even though this doesn't sort of come under arts, but it still sort of comes under like tribute, the, the category of tribute, um, <coughs> human consumption, right? Mm-hmm. Cannibalism. Um, how did that work? Was that um, mainly like a, a, an act of war or only a few people doing it? or It goes back to whoever was the deity. So if uh, the clan A, their deity, was a war god who, or who required blood and sacrifice, they would take their cue from there and then offer what they have, what they are known for, to whoever it is they are tributing to. Whether it's humans, whether it's birds, whether it's... Uh, but it had to be something like a blood... You only offer, well, if it's, a, if it's a war clan, they would offer what's... If not on a war clan, it's the deity. If they are worshipping a deity who is bloodthirsty, they would then offer... See, so they would offer it, not because they want to be offensive, we, when we look at it as, wow, are they, they offering humans? We are looking from the Western Christian lens. Then it was, it was this is just art for us. Mm. Just what? <laughs> it's art for us. We, we were dressing up somebody, yes, dead. But then we have, the closest we have in uh, contemporary culture is you tattoo yourself from head to toe. Right. And um, of course, uh, as discussed before, these deities were tied in with whoever was the chief and yeah. who brought them yeah. into the <clears throat> into the clan. Too. Mm-hmm. So that decides. So the whether a clan, you know, is so so called bloody or not, it depends on mm. depends the chief on the and the deity yeah. that they, yeah. they worship. And was it always like offered as tribute or? Um, uh, like how did how did the people get their tribute? Was it like voluntary? Did they have slaves during war, or did they go out and like cap, capture tributes? Or how how did they get the people? How did they get the food? The the known traditions of tributes that is known in traditional history. There is only one kingdom that was known for it, which was the ancient kingdom of Verata, and Verata was mostly confined to eastern Vitileo. We were starting from the north of Vitileo, from where we have Nambukandra in the Ra province, down the whole coast to even where Mbao is. That would All be, the way around. That would be the Rata kingdom territory, and then it cr- cross over into the Lamai Viti, cross into the okay. That's pretty big. Yeah? And to keep the people, uh, the, 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 the leaders in Virata, to keep the clans connected and uh, compliant, the tributes would... So they initiate the tribute here, people who move here, they added. They took, they added. So along the way, people took what they did not have and added their surplus. It kept going, so the tributes, keeping everybody supplied. Oh, so it went around? Yes. So the oil makers from there, they'll get their pots from here, or vice versa. But that was the tribute. It was a way of maintaining social harmony and cohesion, governance. So it never was one like gathering a lot of stuff just for like one for one chief or something. It was always like distributed. That was that also happened. The, the, that is like the smallest level. Oh, okay. Yes, for one chief, gathering, making, producing for the one chief. But it's not meant to be owned by the chief. Remember, I mentioned the Lord of the Green, the Tirara. He's the one that re- accepts and re- re- redistributes. Right. So if you guys are coming with coconut products, he will exchange and give you the mass products. That's exchange. That's barter. So people go back with something of value. A nice uh, so, balance. Yeah, a nice balance. So those cre- the stuff that are created products or intangible, the the chants and the dance, they were a way of keeping the balance. That was the indigenous governance. And all those produce or products were then reviewed by the whalers, traders and missionaries. Art! We art, you go. Yeah, we art. Okay. Just as our... uh, The word they use is Nayao. This is our wealth. Yes, okay. We use this, we make it out of the philosophy of Vivaratu Ramataki, but we offer it as Nayao, our wealth. 
And oh. I'm not just a fan. Fans also hear yeah, how it works. And then again, that comes down to who had the nicest uh, material to make the fans. Mm. They became known as mm. the guys, the go-to guys for the fans. Go-to guys for the fans. Oh, okay. The go-to guys for the time or the go-to. So, I by saying by saying what I've said, it uh, it sort of I hope it clarifies the, the the formula or the approach in making stuff was meant for social harmony. Right. It But wasn't for one guy to be happy to be. Oh, I love this stuff. Yes. Hey, you want to trade with me? I yeah. like it. No, it was not a me. Remember, this was all done to maintain the stability of the collective. Your individuality must be must comply with the rules of the many, the well-being of the many, the collective. So, in in general, uh, this is more of a really generic question, um, like uh, the overview of Fiji. Who? To your knowledge, who is you know the gang known for making the best whatever? In your opinion, like who are the go-to guys for mats, or who are the go-to guys for in those days or now? Uh, would you happen to know in those days? In those days, they had their own specialists. So yes. The, like if you have the uh, the mat makers of Kilowatt here, there there were specialists in another matter over there. They were just they couldn't compete. So there was no go to come. We have the better mats. Oh, that those mats were done in those materials, and were offered with that spirit to that chieftain. So, like in in Fiji, like which parts of Fiji were known for what? Ma- Masi was known throughout Fiji, Koro, Ovalau, not Mungaleo, because Masi plant was not. I could be wrong. But the traditions show that uh, the, the islands were the ones that had the smaller islands had massy, well, natural environment for the paper mulberry tree. That's the thing I was trying to think of. The mulberry, yeah. Mulberry. Um, What about boat building? Boat building, the original elders are in Nukutumburewa, Hiranakawa and Rokola, the craftsmen. The deity of craftsmen is called Rokola. And his people once lived in Nakawandra. And their another descendants live in this village called Nukutumbu in the province of Rewa. The ones who came in from Samoa through Tonga are the other ones in Bulanga and Lao. Oh, okay. And Kambara. So that's the uh, <coughs> Polynesian influence. Yes. <coughs> uh, let me drink some water. So the go-to, uh, there was, uh, when you say go-to, It's like saying that there was a product that was in was a bigger, greater value than the other. I would say they were all great stuff, and it just was hard to distinguish. This is not, there's no can't fit in because people gave the total mangosa, and the spirit of people to run attack. And it was just perfect. It was meant for this one, and these people, whatever they made, was to such a level. That it fitted with this chief, and it also could qualify as an offering over there, mm. and a tribute over there, and it will be still received with a wow factor. Wow, well, because you only procured what you mastered, and there were different levels of specific specialization and mastery. So the boat builders, uh, there is not the through the missionary slash trade from Polynesia who it gave foreground to the, the canoe makers who are in Lakemba, Kambara and Ulanga and Ongia. Prior to that the canoe makers were from were from uh, Narawiamba, that's the ancestral land. The people is that, uh, in up in Nakawandra in Nara. And uh, is it because they had access to the forest? Like they, they nice were trees? the descendant of the original Rokola, the deity of craftsmanship. Ah, so it was more their deity, and so that's what they specialized in. Yes, abilities did not come. You didn't have to go and attend a course. You are born into it. You are, it's in your blood. It is part of your spirituality. Right. Mm. And that's really fascinating, especially with the whole. Um, Like being born into a role, eh? but that didn't extend to chiefs, because the uh, chiefs are uh, like what we discussed. Chiefs were made. Yeah, chiefs were made. Now 
So through colonialism, chiefs are born. Before that they were made, take us a common person, put him there, and then imbue him. Which is why they had installation ceremonies. Right. The chief would be inducted into all things he had to know about his office. So it's really interesting in that any person yes. could become yes. a chief if they were like... Yes. So like those uh, stories of like, you know, the, the, the boy who became a king. Yes. Those were possible in yes. our days. Ah. Oh, that's uh, it's, it's really interesting because, yeah, my understanding, is that, uh, uh, which is uh, based on today, is that you're born into the role of yes. chieftain. But you are born, that, that is correct. But that was the old one version that was captured by the sailors, the, 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 the traders. They did not ask about the, uh, what, what was the other uh, equivalent around Fiji. So, yes, there were parts of the Pacific and Fiji where leadership was hereditary. Lineage, yeah. The other parts, by merit, you perform, you stay there. After that, it's gone, we look for another one. A vacancy is now available. Who wants to be <laughs> chief? Sign up here. <laughs> well, um, that's been a very illuminating um, episode about um, the aspects of, I'm going to have to do uh, the Fiji art. Yeah. Um, all the different aspects from, you know, uh, weaving to masa making to boat building mm. and all, and how, how practical it has to be, how part of, you know, part of everyday life it has to be, how it has to perform. Have a function, have a use. Have a use, have a use. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's what I find really fascinating. And I think it um, really illustrates how practical mm. uh, Fijian life was there. Eh? I mean, you know, but practical with a high, very really high quality. Exactly, it wasn't just like, oh, we gotta get stuff done, yes. you know. No, they they got stuff done, but still managed to make beautiful things. Yes. Um, there's this uh, movie, uh, Mad Max Fury Road. I think it came out in 2015. Um, you know, it's a post-apocalyptic movie about mm. uh, in Australia after some mm. nuclear war. So you have a lot of bandits and you know evil-looking people. But uh, the movie director he specified that. Even though, like, you know, the terrible war and all, people will still find the time to create nice-looking things. And just because, you know, they don't have much resources, but uh, he instructed the art designers to, like, they got, even though they, they've got a really banged-up car, they make it really nice, you know, they carve things into it. So it was practical, but it doesn't mean it didn't have to be ugly, mm. you know? So they put a lot of effort into making it look nice. So I guess, you know, the same applies here, like... Yes. Yes. We the practical stuff we had, we made sure that it was the best yes. of its uh, form. So that really, you know, that really strikes uh, deep with me when, when, when thinking about the aspects of Fijian culture. Uh, well, with that, I guess we'll call this episode to a close. Thank you very much, uh, people, for uh, I was going to say tuning in. This isn't uh, radio. <laughs> you can watch this anytime you want. Magic of the internet. Uh, thank you very much. This is uh, Fiji BC. Uh, four-part uh, web podcast that has um, been put together for curious people like you and I. So thank you very much, sponsors. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sundrende. And uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. We have one more episode to go. It's the um, episode about the ocean. Or as I like to say, our backyard. <coughs> the Pacific backyard. Now I live.